hey sweet people and welcome back to my channel or if it is your first time here welcome especially i'm sally and it means a lot that you've stopped by today i'm going to be sharing three delicious um autumn inspired breakfasts with some really nutritionally dense ingredients packed in um, that are honestly pretty easy to throw together some take a little bit of forethought one of them does but um yeah just a great way to start an autumn morning so come on along i don't know if you can hear the dog barking outside he's ready for it please don't forget to like this video if you like what you see here give it a thumbs up um and of course don't be afraid to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already let's do this thing this next recipe is one i am so excited for it was inspired by a half-baked harvest recipe um, she released one for her pumpkin cider waffles and i was short on several ingredients so i didn't make those that we're making these instead and I made them before. Um, we are gonna start by dropping six tablespoons of butter. This is the grass-fed butter from Costco into a saucepan and we're gonna let that brown. You just wanna keep an eye on it. It's gonna melt first. Um, you can swirl it around, stir it around gently until you just start to see the beginning of that caramelization um, to prevent it from burning because it happens rather fast. Um, it's like not at all and then all of a sudden. While the butter is browning, I'm gonna go ahead and combine two eggs. one cup of pumpkin puree great source of potassium among other wonderful nutrients one and a half cups of whole milk This is a great brand of milk that I found at a local grocery store called Harris Teeter. I know they sell it elsewhere. I think I've seen it at Whole Foods. Um, but as you can see, it is pasture-raised and grass-fed. Uh, they do not add vitamin D, so while it's still pasture pasteurized, it can be hard to find <laughs> stuff that doesn't have vitamin D added, and this does fit that bill. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of molasses, and while I do this, my husband would like me to clarify that Harris Teeter is not a local grocery store, it is a regional grocery store, but I mean, it is one that we have <laughs> over here in the South, at least in North Carolina. But two tablespoons of molasses. This is a really mineral-rich sweetener. You can hear the butter sizzling away in the background, so don't mind that, but actually a really good source of magnesium, uh, and I'm blanking on everything else. I know manganese is one, do you remember? Well, it's in there. Oh, lots of good minerals. <laughs> Maple syrup and molasses tend to be good options. Don't lose your measuring spoon when it comes to those mineral rich sweeteners. I am whisking this thoroughly to combine and I'm making this the night before I plan to eat it. So I'm gonna add a quarter cup of sourdough starter so that it will ferment the grains. Now you can do this obviously, that's what I'm doing, but this recipe is also great without, you can just leave it out completely and make this the morning of. But even if you choose not to include the sourdough starter, um, it still keeps very well. So you could still make it ahead of time, just keep it in a jar in the fridge and have it for breakfast throughout the week. Just throw it in the waffle maker or on the griddle and have it as pancakes. Now that our wet ingredients are combined, I'm gonna go ahead and add in the dry ones. So I'm starting out with two cups of all-purpose flour, one half teaspoon of baking soda, one tablespoon of baking powder. I'm just using my teaspoon three times. And then we're gonna add just a little bit of salt as well. This is a nice mineral-rich sea salt. Adding about a half a teaspoon. And lastly, our spices. We are going to add about one and a half teaspoons of ground cinnamon. Maybe a little extra, that never hurt anybody. And about a quarter teaspoon of ground nutmeg. And I almost forgot we are going to add about two teaspoons of vanilla. Who actually measures vanilla? Comment below if you are one of those people. 
And then we're gonna whisk it all together and just pop it in the fridge covered overnight. Waffles are finished and it's time to serve them up. If you're feeling really fancy like I am today, you can use some homemade whipped cream. I'm just gonna add a little bit of that to the top. And then I've got some maple syrup that I've warmed up here. This is a really nice maple syrup that, ooh, it's hot. <laughs> a friend brought us from Canada, actually. So it will be a nice addition. My favorite side item for this particular meal is gonna be a couple of fried eggs. That one I accidentally busted the yolk, but I like to keep my yolks runny um, to help boost the available nutrients, or rather my body's ability to absorb them, prevent them from degrading. But anyway, here it is. Beautiful little pumpkin waffle, eggs, and of course that tasty garnish. Good morning. I look absolutely crazy, but I'm here for it. I'm actually less purple than I was um, because I had an awesome workout. And you ever have one of those workouts where you're like, I look insane, I smell awful, but it is so satisfying because it was an awesome workout. That's where I'm at. Um, but that being said, I need to eat breakfast. I had first breakfast beforehand, of course. I never work out fasted. Um, but I'm gonna have second breakfast, which is gonna be even bigger. So today I am making some apple uh, like coconut caramel oatmeal uh, and then we're gonna add some collagen to it for a little bit of extra protein I will probably have some turkey bacon on the side which I won't show you all you can have you know whatever side you want just to make sure you're getting enough protein but this is a great meal anytime um, especially you know with those autumn flavors but also especially good for restoring your glycogen post workout and then also getting in some extra protein by adding that collagen um, to help you know maximize your muscle um, gains, for lack of a better word. Uh, we're gonna start by chopping up an apple and throwing it into a pan with some maple syrup. I've actually gone ahead and chopped up two apples because I decided to make a double recipe so I have some for my early morning tomorrow. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and add my maple syrup. I'm gonna put instructions for one batch in the description box. There'll be two tablespoons of serving. I'm doing about a quarter cup since I'm doing two servings. And I'm also gonna go ahead and add just a little pinch of sea salt here, a mineral rich salt. Wow, my fingers look crazy. <laughs> We'll let this cook down for probably five to 10 minutes until looking for a spatula, until those apples start to get soft and that maple syrup starts to get bubbly. And then we'll add our next ingredients. I ended up kicking up the heat a little bit just so I could get it to boil a little bit more aggressively, but my apples are softened. Maple syrup has thickened a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of cinnamon. Probably, you know, if you really wanna measure a quarter teaspoon for one batch, but I never really measure. I just give it a little sprinkle. And then I'm gonna add one half cup per serving, so in my case, one full cup of full fat coconut milk. I'm also adding about a cup of water. In my case, again, half cup if you are doing a single serving. We're gonna bring this back to a boil and then we're gonna add our oats. All right, our mixture has found pretty aggressive boil here. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my oats, one half cup per serving. In my case, again, one whole cup. I did not pre-soak these because I just didn't have the forethought, forethought to um, make that happen. But you can absolutely do that. Just soak them the night before and then you'll probably reduce your liquid a little bit uh, same with this recipe, you know, if as these ratios are, it's a little bit uh, thicker than you'd prefer or thinner than you'd prefer, 
you'll see the end result shortly. You can always scale back or add adjust a little bit more. So these are going to simmer for about five minutes and then we will serve them up, just adding in that collagen at the very end. Now that my oatmeal has reached my desired thickness, I am adding two scoops of my collagen peptides. I will link a good brand in the description box if I can get a full scoop out of here. We're just gonna mix this in thoroughly and then we'll serve it up with just a little bit of extra cinnamon on top. Pro tip, if you wanna make it just a little extra luxurious, you can add a tiny bit of cream to the top. We've got our oatmeal great source of fiber. We've got our apples, we've got our coconut milk, which is an awesome source of potassium. That cinnamon, maple syrup, good source of magnesium, potassium. A little bit of calcium, lots of good stuff in there. That uh, sounds like a good breakfast to me. I love this last breakfast recipe because not only is it really easy and nutrient dense, uh, it actually uses up the ingredients from the other two recipes um, we've already made so far. And it's gonna be my pumpkin pie smoothie. So I've gone ahead and added to my blender one banana. You can do a little more, a little less, just depending. That kind of applies across the board. With smoothies, I really never measure. I don't think most people do, but I do have, um, you know, my best approximations, my best measurements in the description box of this video. Um, but obviously, play around with it if you like more or less of something. But one banana. I'm going to add some of my leftover canned pumpkin. Again, great source of potassium, of calcium. Um, it's got some magnesium in it. Lots of good stuff. It's actually. Quite a high potassium food which is helpful so about a third to a half a cup of this that's what we're gonna do and then we've got our coconut milk here some left over from our oatmeal I'm going to pour that on in kind of feel it out just depending on how liquidy you like your smoothie but anywhere from you know again a half a cup to one cup is great and then if you find that it is a little bit too rich what you can do is half of the you know full fat canned coconut milk half water that's totally fine as well um, or if you use cow's milk you can substitute that whatever um, or substitute it for part. I think the coconut adds a really nice flavor. I've got my maple syrup. We're gonna add about two tablespoons of this. Perfect. I'm going to add a splash of vanilla extract. I've got two scoops here of my collagen peptides. I will link a good brand of those in the description box. And then we're gonna give it just a pinch of salt. So you get some nice adrenal support in here with the um, potassium and sodium and you know even vitamin C coming from the pumpkin. I almost forgot the most important ingredient or one of the most important ingredients, some pumpkin pie spice, about a quarter teaspoon is what we're going for here. that is it y'all i hope these recipes inspired you gave you some fresh ideas and please don't hesitate to leave a comment with your favorite autumn breakfast because i seriously am always in need of some inspiration myself and i would love to hear what delicious ideas y'all have uh, but that is it for me until next time bye y'all